Greetings and salutations, everybody. This is Rick Koppel. I'm at you from Denver, Colorado. Another episode of Not Only Screw Guy. Today we're going to take another look at the... Well, we're going to not know about another look, but we're going to take a look at Vanilla OS. I've never showed this one before on the screen. So today is your lucky day. Let's get to it. Yeah, baby. Here I am on my Ventoy. And... Uh, you can see I've got my ISO, vanilla ISO highlighted there. And we can take off with vanilla OS. Let me just install part of it. So we're going to kick in with that. Uh, it's pretty distro overall, I think. And uh, yesterday they released their last ISO, I think, or for the current term. Yeah, so they put in freeze mode, apparently. We have an OS, looks nice, doesn't it? And, uh, yeah, so it's it's ready to grow, hopefully. Now, I know there's been some people who reviewed it earlier and they had problems with it. I actually had a few problems with the installer, see if those are gone or not. But I had a few problems with the installer earlier. Uh, but I was able to work through it and get it installed. Hopefully this will be easier and more smoother. Taking the while as it does on these uh, ISOs to boot into its uh, live environment. But there you are. There's live environment. Nice looking. Isn't it? So it's a GNOME desktop is what it's got here. And yeah, you got your try vanilla or install vanilla OS. So we're going to try we're going to install vanilla OS on top of this. On this machine. Languages, yep, that's right. English, yes. Okay, lay out English, English now. I don't know, the person makes it probably from Australia or something. Anyway, that's one of the things I have problems with is clicking this variant thing, but that popped up pretty easy there. And so you just have to go down to English, US. And uh, there it is, English US. Yeah, it worked better than it last time, so I fixed that. And yeah, that's how. Now, region, I'm not in Africa. I don't know why they don't set it so that it automatically works there, but that pops up easier. As I said, I had trouble with these pop up lists last time I installed these things. Uh, you are America and zone. This was a problem with I have to click it over and over front of us. Now the date and time you can select this and you can select it in the OS after you get started, so now it's critical to get the time exactly right time zone, but they'll have to realize there's no ADAC America, I don't think. <laughs> Region zone. I say I can't seem to select this. So we'll go with that for now and we'll go move on. Daytime we can set time zone later on and when we get installed. And here we select a disk. This is maybe the confusing part for some people. Let's see, I got SDA should be the right one, 238.47 gigabytes. Yeah, sounds about right. Now what it does, does highlight the ones that are available. This is my uh, 59 gigabyte storage. And I'm not sure, oh, oh that. Yeah. That's probably the, uh, it's probably my, uh, my USB um, ISO I'm on here, the DM-2. Not sure about the name, I've never seen DM dash whatever before. That'll throw some people probably. At any rate, they got all the ones not highlighted that so you can't select. So, anyway, this should be the right one SDA. The SDA drive on it. So, we'll select that one. That works pretty good.
configure. Yes, uh, so yes. They increase this manual partitioning where you make manual partitions. I'm not sure I want to try this just yet. Especially on a, um, on a, uh, install like this where you have a, an immutable file system it's installing. It's sometimes best to just take the defaults <laughs> easier. So, the entire disk will be erased on there. And choose how to install. So, that's all right. So, we'll just apply. Take that default, the entire disk being locked out and install us with this vanilla OS on it. Now you see. Yeah, the, the way this works is every time you get it set so it's, things are set right where you want it, then this arrow will appear over here where you can click it. Go to the next section. Long time made your disk. Please review them carefully. Entire disk, okay. Confirm changes. And erase the tire disk and then now to create a user. That was Rick. Huh. Yeah, it looks a little bit different than the installer does. And the, but you can tell it's kind of a ubiquity installer under, underneath it all. Password. And when they match, this will appear over here. You take out one letter, it goes away. It dims, basically. So we'll do there. Say next. Okay, so confirm installation. Yeah, that's was one chain we get there. So, all the OS says, we'll install it. And yeah, yeah, the interesting system that it uses pretty fast installation. Or oh, somewhere wrong, please come back. Christian developers, those log like, well. Okay, so what I do in this case, I usually go here and I'll bring up the uh, departed. Right there. Anyway, I confirmed what I got here. See, here's. See, this is SDA. Going to 38.47 gigabytes. And it's got its current system on it. What I do here is I go. BIOS. Create partition table. It says warning that it's race all down the entire disk. You have to sort of want that to have happen. So I select DPT apply. Now I got a clean disk for install, so if there's some problems with it, it'll get rid of it hopefully. And apply. Things it's already applied. And you click it. So we'll do that. We'll try and start it up again. Vanilla OS installation. Back where we started. We have this again. All right, now it says we're done. Reboot now, it says. All done. So it's probably installed. We'll see what you get on the other end of it. There I am. Let's just see what we have here. Where I log in and check and see what all is installed on here as far as operating desktops and stuff like that. It's got GNOME on org, XORG, GNOME Classic on XORG, GNOME Classic and just GNOME. So yeah, that's one thing you might want to do when you start off with a live stream, live boot up is all I think it carries over there and some do, some don't. Right. Apple fan.
There you go. Been a while, but I got it eventually. My fingers aren't as, as good as they used to be. So, no internet connection. So far, updates from waiting and ready to be installed, it says. So what that means, that's a notification letting you know you need to reboot so you can install those because this is a mutable system, so it installs them in the background on another session of the, of the GNOME desktop and stuff like that. Then it'll, uh, when you reboot, it'll install what it'll move over to the next session of it and, and it'll already be updated there. So we'll go ahead and go into update mode here. We'll go in now. I'm going to show you a few tricks on GNOME when we get to the user part. I like to set this up because I'm not a really big GNOME fan that much, mainly because I don't like the workflow. And it's also, you have to do a lot more clicking with your mouse oh, half the time. So, um, you know, is what it is. So I set it up so I can do a lot, a lot, majority of my work without having to move my mouse around since the keyboard works better for me. So we, but we installed it, so that's good. And uh, we'll just take a gander here and see what we got. Let's see. Yeah, we got a set our date and time, don't we? Go to assist settings. And we go down here to date and time. And we have set time format, 24 o'clock, like 12 hour clock, basically. Now a lot of these are things on this, you have to like, take them several time, a.m. p.m. Did we, let's see, yeah, so that's not that. And, Yeah, that's mountain time zone for me. So I think that sets that mountain time zone. 741. Yep, that's what my watch says. So we're ready to go there. That's automatic day and time, which means things to the internet time zone. And you got it there. So that's how you set that date and time. It was the right time zone. Now you're set to your old. All right, so now we're going to look at uh, the after install activities I usually do, as well as some that are prescribed for us here in this. Welcome. Now, uh, I recorded the previous part yesterday, and I'm recording this part. So it's morning now, and so that's why my shading is worse off. It doesn't work too in the mornings, that kind of thing. And that's why I got my hat on now. Yay. As you can tell there, it's doing it in several languages. A welcome screen. And so, yeah, so if you want to find this, and the, and there you press uh, Super A opens up the apps. I thought it did. Oh, I'm on the wrong keyboard again. Huh? Super A opens up the apps, there they are. Looks like a big flower there. The vanilla flower, probably. <laughs> Although they call it vanilla flower. In the real world, but yeah, so it's because that's first OS first setup. Now, sometimes, like the first time I opened this up yesterday, it didn't run. I don't know why, but when I opened it up this morning, it did. There you go. Don't know why, but anyway, that's where you can find it if it doesn't open up for you. This wizard will take care of everything. It says, Make your choices. Sets up the system how you want it. So let's start and see what it says. Color scheme. Now, the light color version of this looks pretty nice, but I like dark better, basically. I want to change this to dark. Not too bad either. So we'll leave it there. Next, we have flat packs, package manager, and app images. Manage configures flat packs in the flat pad repository. We'll leave that checked. I think that's yeah, it's automatically checked on. So if you don't want flat packs and app images, you just click those off. But I would carry. I would recommend you leave flat pack at least on because you need that for for the uh, installs and stuff. 
you won't be you won't have the good system now they're gonna put snaps on here eventually but they aren't on there quite yet so we'll leave those on okay then you got your core applications central no maps like calendar or document viewer office you can like to install office on here i'm going to like install that how many utilities useful utilities like bottles or cells sound recorder oh so we'll install all that too just to see what we get all right Okay, hey, time shift. Choose whether to install time shift to create snapshots of your system. Yep, we want to do that. Restricted codexes. Choose whether to install restricted codexes and fonts. So yeah, this is kind of like the little box you check on Linux Mint on the installation part of it. It just does it after the install. We'll install that. Yeah. Following your optional settings, leave them as they are they are if you don't know what they do. App port. App port's a crash reporting system that helps us improve the stability of the system. I'll turn that on. I think it's important for them to know what about that. All these are by default and off. I think you need a password there. There you go. Calling all the stuff I guess I told it to install, huh? Yeah, clicking on that part. We'll cut it to trim it down or whatever, or speed it up or something. Do this next part since you don't want to probably sit here and watch me start paint dry on my screen. Okay, now we're back and it's reboot now. It says, start your device to enjoy your vanilla OS experience. We'll do that. And we'll reboot. Where she goes. And that was a vanilla OS's setup function there. And uh, now I've already done a little bit on this. I'll show you that in a minute. What I usually do because I don't like my screen blanking out on me. So I I uh, usually set the power functions to so that it doesn't happen. And one thing I do like about GNOME in this regard is that it, it's a simple one-stop process not like uh ad where you have to go for power and then you got to go through the uh lock screen issues on the other one it's a lot of times to set your screen so it doesn't blank out on you while you're gone or doing something unless you want to but then i just use uh super l to close out the locked screen if i want to leave it locked for a while while i go do some stuff you do not like my screens because I'm the one here half the time, so. <laughs> so anyway, we got that. Now I put my password and put them right. There I go. Yay. And finalize your drive should be ready soon. Oh, we got more stuff to do, apparently. Okay, I'm going to come back here while it's cooking on this thing to tell you about the system a bit. Uh, it has three basically if you watch my video on uh, micro s a lot like micro s in that regard it has different commands different ways of doing things but it's a lot like micro s you have distro boxes you have flat packs that want to use dominantly and if you can't use that then you can use a distro box and if you can't use that you got ab root okay, it's all done yay now we close and we that's ready to use. Probably we're gonna reboot. I don't know about that. Anyway, what do we got here? A lot more stuff we did before, huh? There's your app launcher. App image launcher. If you have any app images, you can run them through that. Contacts, weather, blocks, apps. It was our, now this is some I added H top and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Videos, calculator, music, time shift, settings, system monitor, 
boxes. An LOS control center. Build these, which go ahead in there. I don't have anything else to do. And then it's a few things here. And then they added the uh, connection. They added that. They added backup. I think backup was there before, maybe it was, but I don't remember. And they added uh, character, logs. Those two things. Red in there. And they added fonts. A calendar, text editor, LibreOffice, cheese, LibreOffice Space, LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Strong, LibreOffice Press. And then they've got LibreOffice Math, LibreOffice Writer, Bottles, Royal Game Launcher, Lutris, Flat Seal. I mean, Metadata Cleaner, R Note. That's what R Note does. Kind of sort of sorely. Doorway Radio, Sound Recorder. We got all those options to play with. And down here in their dock, we have a web. This is, I think it's, and they call it some different called kind of web, web, is all they call it. Program itself is called web. I think it's basically the GNOME, uh, GNOME browser though. GNOME, if you want to call it that. Photos, files. Software, help, help, help. And so the same thing as this, they usually, we always call it called GNOME Terminal. I think it's called Console here. It's an updated version of Simpler, I guess, or something like that. You have your app show application, which you're already looking at right now. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to install some things on here. So like I want to install a little, uh, Libre Wolf browser. So I can go here to this. It's all fully pretty much uh you know see things it's all had a little check mark on it right there. That's convenient. Go here. Libre Wolf. There's Libre Wolf browser. Uh, yes, it's Blab. Project been rolled for correct, blah blah blah, and all that. So I install. Works on installing it. Right, so that's open. Try it out and see what we got here. And there it is. Emu Wolf. Pretty good. That'll be my default browser priority match when I set up to be that way. They have your option. You could use all flat packs from the console here. Terminal. OBS, OBS, all OBS, that'll work. Flat pack install OBS. And let's install the studio. Not that easy. Studio. Okay, so if I know all these things, what you have to do is look through here and see which one you got. AppCom OBS Project Studio. Number five there is what I probably won't want. So five. Okay, we're to have our OBS Project Studio runtime. Uh... Yes, yeah, let's so all that. All that. Let's install all that stuff. OBS Project Studio. We have OBS on there too. Yay. That's how you install things on there on the uh, system. If you want to do it on the command line, you can do it that way. Now, the way that you differentiate what you can do is if it's not in Flat Hub, what you need to do is you need to try a distro box. So, using Apex, which is APX of apt which zapped you zapped 
but it uh, basically uses it in a distro box. So it's all programs use. So we have to, I see it's completed now. So yeah, the way you have to install things on Apex, now, if you need to, unlike my Chris, it does have manual man pages. Nice. So if you want an Apex, gives you all the little commands and all that kind of stuff you can do. You can auto remove, you can clean, you can enter the shell and the managed container. So if you have a container, you just enter, export, it creates a program desktop printer. To tag out each top on this app apps over here and this initializes manage container install list. Mostly, what you probably do is you probably just do install and update and upgrade. Yeah, so let's go to settings and see what we got there. Huh? The way you do that is you hit their Windows key and you go to settings, type up keyboard. And it pops your settings up there. Go down here. Now, sometimes you have to collect these more than once to get them back to me, but that would work pretty easy there. Home folder. I don't have a whole lot that's got anything listed here. Oh, it says this is a control E or super E, that is. I set that. And I'm see my client. I don't have any my client here yet. A browser. A browser. Major B on that. Super B for browser. Hey, Windows. I wanted to change this from Alt F4. Here, Super Q. Right now, that's the main thing I need to change there. But I also would want to put some other key bindings in here. Where normally I'd put in the the uh, I'd initiate the console. So like I go over here and. Your custom and shortcut purchase all console, but I'll we'll assume it is if it's not from terminal one and two terminal. That shortcut part. Is turn. I use a shortcut for that. Add it in. Let me better move now. See if it works. Return. You were did it. Yeah, I think it's called on terminal. Really, what it is. Put it here. Close. Is you have to find out the name of this program is. Hey, how do you do that? Well, you can do that pretty easy, actually. Let's add a minute because I want to show you a few other things. Now, what I did when I first came on here to I kind of went here to power, and I basically went to power saving option, dim screen. I turned that off. That screen blanked to never. Automatic suspend off. 
automatically that'll keep your screen on all the time as long as you have it on. As long as you have your computer on, you have the screen on. Go take your lunch or something like that. Come back and it's sitting there waiting for me patiently. <laughs> uh, if you need to set your displays, you can do that there. Set your your resolution right there. Also change orientation if you need to. But anyway, one of the things I want to show is that here. Okay, keyboard printer. LibreWolf sorry says default application web browser. Hey, Super B should open up LibreWolf. I want to do that. About the section I want to take. Device name. Vanilla. This is where you can change your system name real easy here. And device name. You just change it here. Pretty easy actually. Easier than what I usually do. <laughs> so. So uh, you change this to Dello, like that, and you rename the device. And now when you bring up a console, it'll have it as Dello instead of that. So let's see what hardware information we have here. Every 8 gigabytes, Dell Optiplex, Optiplex tell you what it is, I've seen. And some weird there before. Processor F5, 3, 4, 7, 0, 4 of them. Intel Core, Mason, Intel Graph, HD Graphics. Disk capacity, 256 gigabytes. Software information. So we have Vanilla OS. Right to there, Vanilla OS is the OS name. 64 bit. Some version is not available for some weird reason. Windowing system is Wayland. Now you can change it to XORG if you want by going back to the login screen <coughs> and selecting XORG. Uh, GNOME XORG, classical GNOME XORG is one. You have X11. If you need have applications that need to run X11 and not and other things like Wayland, won't work on Wayland or something like that, you can change it over to that. That shows you what we got here, what kind of system we have. And you have additional drivers, which just is if you had wait NVIDIA or stuff like that. Click on that and, and install them if you need them, that kind of thing. Although I think as I understand that that welcome screen we went through, it'll check if you have an NVIDIA card, and if it does, then it'll ask if you want to install the drivers for it. So we have about, let's see. Regulating most of you know these things here. Now, one of the things that's interesting is everybody wants to always know about is the uh, background. What kind of background does this puppy have on it? Well, I don't care for the dynamic workspaces so much. I like to have a set number to uh, do that. So you can select it here, fix number of workspaces. Backgrounds in. Now, like a lot of distros, you can install backgrounds through the to the uh, prompt of the command line. Uh, this has several different backgrounds. It has this one here. That's not too bad. Nicely. And you have all these abstract backgrounds that I'm not all that keen on, but people like them. So. These ones that'll show this, it shows you dark and the light theme version. So whichever version you have it on, that's what you'll get. There's wallpaper. I have this paper here. Here. Wallpaper there. That's interesting looking. Let's see. More. No. Just leaf with two drops on it. <laughs> nice. And this one I like so pretty well. It's a, a nature one. The house farm out there in the bottom of the valley next to the lake. Up in the mountains, apparently. Get that one. Get this one, which is a elk or whatever that is. Kind of a, that kind of modern art type thing, I guess you could say. We have some other ones down here, though. We have this one. 
snowy fields, trees and all. That's about proper for this time of year, I think. <laughs> Supposed to get snow tomorrow, actually. You got this one here. Mountains. Got this one here, which is... Mountains, a lake, I guess that is. And clouds flowing through there. That's nice. This under close up of the ground, wood chips and stuff, apparently. Yeah, we had that one selected. And I went back through some of them again. Here's an octopus. Looks real fun, doesn't it? That's pretty much it. What do you have with the wallpapers? I'm going to go with this one right here for the time being. Here's your Bluetooth, your network, your Wi Fi setup. There are those networks. Oh, yeah, I was going to show you how to install some stuff. Now, flat packs, we already gone over that, and you know how to install flat packs. On this, you just go to the, to the uh, software center. And uh, in the dock there, right you there, and you have it, and it says files. I'll check this out real quick, see what kind of files I have. Yeah, about files, the known project files. Yes, it's okay. I haven't used as much, so I don't know. But uh, I guess it's pretty functional. Operates like most other file managers. The only way I increase this font size is just to do the old plus, 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 like that. So you can see what's going on here. So we got that. Now, you know, it says Dello on the end down to vanilla. Apex, install. We're going to install it. Let's right. say so we're going to install. Now, one of the things you want to do is keep in mind how you structure this. First, you get flat packs, your first option to install things. And that's for primarily if you had a flat pack for it, you want to install it. That first. But, also uses distro boxes to install things. Now, there's kind of a peculiarities about distro boxes. That um, the distro box will be able to see your home directory. Same home directory that you see on your host system. Same directory any other distro box will see. Home directory. But the system guts of it are different too. I mean every distro box has its own guts so to speak. And uh, so yeah. So anything that needs to operate on the guts system. You need to install. You can install that by distro boxes. But if you have a system where you have a, so anything that operates on the guts of system, you have to install by AB root. Or what would normally be called transactional updates in macro S, or if you're familiar with that at all. Yeah, so AB root and Apex install does distro box and stuff. So if you just use Apex install and then it's all in the utility install something like I did HTOP there. That's how I did that. It would be that being it basically sets up a distro box or a duplicate of Ubuntu and installs things in that distro box. So like if you had a text editor, that would be a primary thing. So let's just say mousepad probably would be a good example of a text editor you can use. Let's well, say install mouse pad on, on this using distro box. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is this installs a lot of dependencies, especially the first few times you install programs on it. 
So yeah, so you can see this installs it just like it would like normal, but it's actually installing this in a visitor box. Gammy specifically. And that tells you to support binary mousepad to host. So you can directly tell without using Apex Run. Also export it later using Apex Export. So we say yes. And it successfully exports by the binary binary export into a local bin mousepad. And there's your mousepad. Hello world. Subterranean world. You get the idea. <laughs> I'm training your world. And now I'm going to save this. And we're going to save this in our home directory. Put in documents to be officially correct. It says document. Not very important one, but it's document nonetheless. Name. Hello. Right. Now what we're gonna do <clears throat> minimize this okay then we're going to go to this we're gonna go to document on our host system now. Hello text now. Open with text editor, you open with mouse pad should be an option. This actually works as I hope it I don't see it now though. There it is. Uh -huh. Open. There you go. Hello, Subterranean World. You said default, and you said it however you want. You want to use mouse pad, and you mean pretty much just like you would any other program. It'll save it to you as long as you save it to home directory, and you're, you're not editing a uh, system file back in the root or something. Yeah, you'll be able to do this. Anything that you can save on your home directory, you can use mousepad for. That's cool. Well, that's how you do it in DistroBox. You will close those out. Any program that you need to have root access to your system, 99.9% of your applications out there, this is going to be sufficient. I mean, you're going to have your flat packs to take care of most of your stuff. Most people, things people want to do, they can do it in a flat pack. Pretty easy. But it also, if you need it, you got distro boxes you can use. Now, if you have to have some that accesses root files, like say nano, something like that, nano's already installed on here, so I have to worry about installing it like you do in micro S. But, but if you had to install some, you can get into root system and use AB root. And so when you run AB root, And it's pretty much easier to run a root in a shell. Do must be root transmitter. Okay. So password for Rick. Okay, change main shell will be applied to the future root on the next boot on uh, on successful. Running a command in the transactional shell is meant to be used by advanced users for maintenance purposes. You ended up here, we're trying to install an application. Consider using Flatpak app images or Apex instead. Read more about AB, AB root at blah blah. So, if you want to proceed, so that uh, gives you a kind of warning thing that you really need to. It's kind of like your last resort where you can't do it through Flatpaks, you can't do it through. You know, what. Probably you would do when this is like 
install drivers. All right, like I have uh, some I'm gonna I'm gonna show you here. Now I can only do three of you root, and that would be to add a sum into the user directory. You have to do an occasion. You sure want to proceed in CS because I'm gonna do some maintenance on this puppy. Ready? So unlocking app, tap get, dpkg, even local diversion. So now we're in root on, on Delo. Thanks, A, B. Now we're in the future root though. One that's not installed yet because the way this works is going to install it. It's going to work in the future root here. And then when you reboot, it'll load up the future root directory. Make it the current directory. And then boom, you have it. So anything you do in AB root has to be activated by rebooting once you're done. Otherwise, you won't see it. <laughs> you, know, you can't just install it, install an application or something in, in AB root and do whatever you want. And then expect it to work right. So I need to start off with B. And you go to risk tips. Linux tips and there I am right there second option and what I want to get here is uh, September basic fast young this is my uh, my keyboard, my mechanical keyboard I have here, and it has this peculiar function that that, that it uh, when it wire when you have it on wireless, not when it's plugged in, but when you have it on wireless, and and when it's on wireless, of course, it wants to conserve energy, so it shuts down the lights on the keyboard after a certain amount of time has passed, a pretty certain amount of time, two minutes, I think it is. And so, what happens is, is, for some weird reason, it sends a signal to the system and shuts the system down too. It shuts down the keyboard. Unless you have this code right here in this file right here. So, but the only way to access the user directory on an immutable system is through AB root or, or transactional updates like you have in, you know, uh, Micro S, that kind of thing. So, what you have to do is I want something in here. I can just copy this. I don't have to have sudo there since I'm in root. You copy that. Go back here. Paste this in there. And we nano into it. Now, here's all the stuff. Yeah, it's got a lot of stuff in here that you don't want to leave, you don't want to mess with any of this, but you just go down, page down, it gets the end. Then you go back to the, this, copy this section here, like that, copy that. Go back here, paste this in. There you go, and then you can save it. And you can X out. So if that's all you had to do, that's all you had to do. Now you can install a program, you just use app like you would if you were in uh, whatever distro box you're in. You're that's use it like you would in any other distro. So like if you had a, a open source install on here with zipper. Yeah, you use Zipper here, or if you're using Debian or or Ubuntu or whatever, you use apt get or apt or whatever. But like if I want to install some on here, do NeoFetch because that is one that a lot of people like to use. So, uh, but you can't really install that on DistroBox because you can install on DistroBox and the DistroBox's stuff information. You're not going to get your host system. You want NeoFetch for um, 
your distro box and you can do that but if you want neofetch your host system you have to do it this way so otherwise they give you wrong information and you hey i'm not on ubuntu mm -hmm. so let's see nano so you have apt that's a high school apt install neofetch All is done. Now, so we just exit out of this when you're ready to exit out. Locking app, locking app, yeah, locking DPKG again. So all that stuff is locked up, so you can't just do it unless you're in this section. That is user bin new fetch, user share doc new fetch copyright, change log Debian, new fetch. Modified F stab. Good. How did you do that? Okay, so yeah, and then it was when we successful transaction, please successfully reboot apply changes. So yeah, so you got share X11, that's a the file we we uh edited to put in the stuff for the, my my account keyboard so I can use it wirelessly. And now it's plugged in because I don't plug it in, it'll kill out the thing whenever the lights go out. So you have to keep plugged in until you get to this point. And then you go. Yeah, so do that. So sudo reboot. Restarting it, and we'll get rebooted. And this and there, that worked. Matter of fact, it kept the last settings. That's how you change your. Leave it as you said it, basically. It's so big and everything. You know, fetch. There you go. It's Penguin Vanilla OS. OS Vanilla OS. And then, yeah, uh, stuff about that. It's, yeah, it's kernel that's operating on 5.19, which would be good enough to sit on my framework over here. So. Package we got 50 flat packs says so that's all packages it has on it, but it's not listing all the packages in the system. So that's interesting. So 43.1 is got his D. Didn't see that on the other one because it couldn't get that information. And uh anything else. That's interesting. Terminal is a G D X K G X. I'm gonna put that in the pop up. A G X K G X. Kind of weird terminal name, but okay. Yeah, let's do that and see if that works. If we can change the wallpaper, since we're able to do that. Maybe I change the wallpaper and it goes to that. Everything seems to work now. We had our wallpaper back. Yay. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, so if you don't, if it boots up the first time and doesn't run a boot, you just run it. And, uh, yeah. Now, if you want to install NeoFetch in, in a, in a, uh, Distro box, you can do that, and then you'd have them side by side one in Ubuntu or whatever, one on Debian, one on on uh, Vanilla OS. Now, if you want to install something from the AUR, so you can do that on Distro box. So, all you have to do is put the AUR flag on it, and it'll install Arch on your. Well, you can figure that out pretty much on your own, I think, pretty much from all the documentation it's got on here, main pages, keyboard settings.
works. It works, yay. That's the name of the console's KGX in the system. <laughs> Believe it or not, rude. Okay. Make this complicated for us, huh? So just calling it console or something plain and simple and obvious like that. And the name is this weird KGX abbreviated thing. Okay. That's known for you. <laughs> so now I got that said, I can easily ram a console. He's having one too. Yay. And then bring that up. I can close up. I got all these key bindings working for me. That's why I like to set up GNOME is with key bindings. Because it's usually harder to get some of these things. Now if you get any pro other program like you want Libre out of Wolf. They have put up, up Libre Office Writer. First to open up, so it'll take a while to do it. Did you know? No, I didn't. Okay. So, it's LibreOffice 7.5. And you can type in write your novels and all that kind of stuff. I know a lot of you write novels and stuff, right? <laughs> like I do. So that is Vanilla OS. Take a good look at it, I think, pretty much. So I had to install Flatpak, so I had to install Distrobox. So I had to install now Distrobox, and well, yeah. Uh, Flatpak, and I see all these nails down here AUR, DNF. Now, I think there's some of these they don't have activated yet, or at least they used to not, I don't know. I don't remember seeing anything about other than the thing zipper. No, oh, they have zipper. They're gonna have a void Linux repositories and Nick. So now from now on you don't need to have any special distro to load up distros repositories is a cool thing. Alpine repository, Fedora, uh yeah. Oh, Arch and Debian boot to repository. So, yeah, if you just if you just do it without it, it defaults to boot to. So that has been OS, and sorry for all the stop starts and edits and things I have to do. I have to edit myself a lot on this one. But at any rate, it worked out pretty good, I think. Hopefully. You'll get a view of it and get the AUR. And uh, yeah, so it's really as good as Micro S almost. I mean, to say almost, but there's certain things Micro S is better at and it's further along, I think, in the process than Vanilla is. Vanilla's made a lot of progress, so, so yeah, you could have a Vanilla OS on your computer and you use other distros on it, pretty easy. See, we be able to install most programs that we wanted to install. Now, the only tri trick is when you go to ABRU, which hopefully you only have to do once or twice if you do it all. Then, then you have it to where you can. Uh, so they're still working at some of the bugs in this distro. I think there's a few bugs here and there, that kind of thing. Nothing major. You practically use this as your daily driver now. I think I'd say. And contrary to what most people used to say about Vanilla OS, it's not in its prime, that kind of thing. You know, to a certain extent, it's probably going to be more upgrades and stuff, but but Ubuntu, the base core of it is frozen in place right now, so yeah, so this froze this in place too. And uh, But you can always get a AUR and all that kind of stuff with it, so it's pretty cool. really like it. And, uh, I like static releases of of a uh, of thing of distros like this stability and that kind of thing. And Manila has that. That's good. Use cases. Use cases. What are the use cases for this? Well, I'd say similar to Micro S, and that you have on one end you have your developers. You may want to use distro boxes to show certain things. 
I think the less you mess with your root director stuff, the better off you are. <laughs> do only do what you have to do at AB root, but not, but not uh, anything more than that. Do the rest of distro boxes or in your flat packs if you want to sell that. So the developers would be good because they can test out other programs and other distros. Kind of cool. Especially if you had a program like you bash file that I had. I could test out in Pac-Man, I could test out in NCA, I could test out in all those other distros in there. But, uh, yeah, so that's cool, and, uh, you know, I really like it. Plus, you got the, you notice I had that problem there where it seemed like it locked up when I first rebooted it out of AB root, and uh, all I did was reboot again, and it worked. <laughs> But the other use case for it I find particularly appealing is that for people who don't know much about Linux or, or new to Linux or stuff like that. Now, this is easier to set up than uh, Micro S is as far as setup goes. Now, the other cases, use case you have for this is for new users that uh, new to Linux, that kind of thing. Not only because you have somebody who can install micro s on your computer then they can do that and it's easier for the new user and then for people that operate in environments where you have a lot of people who aren't familiar with linux want to use linux be a good system to start them out on because they can't screw it up if you don't tell them about ab root and all that kind of stuff it professionals in certain uh areas would find it productive to install it because then they wouldn't have as many, many uh, IT calls. Help, help, I can't do this. I've destroyed my system. Oh no. Yeah, reinstall your system and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to have this problem with this as often as that you would with the regular Linux system or something like that if you installed it. And for grandma who's just going to poke around on the web and read her emails and stuff like that, you know, or your mom or dad or somebody who's not real big. I mean, they've done Windows computers before, but they haven't been on Linux at all. Yeah, they can't really screw this one up very easy. I think I really like vanilla OS. It's a good concept. It's also getting better as it goes along. And uh, so far, I think it's getting real close to being there. The productive, and I could probably solve this using myself. And I don't think most problems I would run into would be any issues that I couldn't deal with most of the time. But uh, once you get things set up the way you need them set up, then you don't have to mess with the root anymore. Just let her be. And you can. Or whatever programs you want on it through flat packs and distro boxes, and that'd be it. Yeah, Micro S and Vanilla OS, and, and I guess one Silver Blue and all that on Fedora. Those are the wave of the future. I don't think the distros are totally going to totally go away though. Too many people like me that like to tinker, play with. Uh, I say tinker, but it may sound like I'm just playing around with it mostly. Sometimes I do play around with it, like when I saw the i3 on the distro box. I like to do that kind of stuff on occasion. But some of my tinkering is uh, really just getting things done I need done, like putting the thing in the uh, text I showed you in, in the input function. So my keyboard, I can disconnect it now. And it should work, or honestly work, even when it's turned off. Now just unplug it, the light's going right now, and it'll cut out in a minute, and then it'll stay on. I'm going to shut down my system. That's been a little less I really like. I probably install it at some point on one of these computers here. I don't know whether I'm going to install it on my main driver, or I'm going to install it on, on this. But I already have Micro S installed on this Apex, so Apex, Acer, Apex. Sacer uh, Spire over here. I have my caress on it. So I'm not sure if I want to install that on that. This on here. 
it's kind of a major thing when you miss over your daily driver and you get to and don't forget to uh to have a wonderful day today remember may the linux force be with you bye